Hello and welcome to another development log of Project 3rd IVR. It's Saturday again and uh, yeah, I want to show you what I've been doing this week. And obviously the first thing that I can show you is this new environment, which is uh, an icosphere and a ground and a skybox and that's it. So this is a very simple environment. I think it has, I don't know, around other with the character model it has 10,000 triangles that need to be rendered and uh, I don't know 10 draw calls so it's very cheap to render all of this uh, yeah so there's shadows baked into the texture I don't know if you can see this and this is going to be the sandbox environment it is really cheap and uh, this way you can have a lot of stuff in your scene without uh, getting performance issues so at least that's what uh, what's the uh, idea behind of all of this. Yeah, so what can I show you? I've uh, added a few things to the menu and changed a few things on the menu. So first of all, we have the spawnables right here. And uh, yeah, we have weapons. So let's see if something's changed in weapons. Yeah. Oh, we got the shurikens. So we got all the stuff that I've added in the game that it is now, it's now on the menu. And I've added this uh, baseball bat that you can use to kill NPCs and all of things. And all of these things. Uh, yeah, and that's it basically for weapons. Then we have tools. Tools is now a separate menu. We have uh, the nail gun, the balloon gun, and this is new, a delete gun. Uh, yeah, people didn't really like the sound of the delete gun. I wonder why. Uh, so that's basically a quack sound effect. And uh, I think I'm going to change this to something uh, more futuristic and uh, maybe adding a dissolving material to whatever object is being deleted. Oh, the hand pose doesn't change when an object is deleted. So uh, just to have uh, it look a little bit better, just to have a better looking effect on this delete gun. And uh, yeah, obviously the delete gun, the delete gun is in the game to uh, ensure the performance in the sandbox environment. I think this is really useful. Also, now we have another tab in the menu called vehicles. So we can spawn the ATV, for example. And uh, I changed the entry of the ATV a little bit. Uh, now you, uh, the camera position gets directly transferred onto the uh, ATV, so it's no longer offset it. And I've uh, changed and I've deleted the uh, rotation offset. So whatever you, rotation you have, it will be applied to the vehicle. So, and I've changed the controls on this ATV. Now it's on the joysticks, so back and forth. And uh, there's a little bit of uh, a little damper on the uh, on the handle. And I made this so that it, it, it will be easier to uh, have any guns and these kind of things. So if you had a gun, so there was nothing in my inventory, unfortunately. So if we had a gun and would drive on the ATV, then we could uh, yeah, just grab a gun and I don't know, do a drive-by or a fire on NPCs or anything like that. So uh, yeah, that's basically new in this environment that you oh, that you can spawn these kind of things. And obviously we can also delete this object. Another thing that I've changed is a few things on the active ragdoll. So I'm going to show you this in a moment. Also I've added uh, one zombie to the game. And it died for some reason. Ah no, there's something uh, that I need to change on these. I changed something on the uh, active ragdoll and that is not applied to the zombies at the moment. And that's why they don't work properly. So. Uh, 
Now we have these, this active rectal. Now the uh, balancing of the active rectal is no longer based on the stress on the hip anchor. I changed that. Now it is based on uh, the head position and the average foot position. <laughs> when you think about it, that's really what makes you flip over. If your foot and feet are getting too far apart in the horizontal space, then uh, you flip over. And that's basically what I've implemented here. Uh, for the, the walking animation is based on the position of the head in relation to the feet. And of course this goes the other way around. And now it's uh, a little bit more consistent. The get up animation still looks a little bit wonky, but uh, better than in previous versions. And now if you push the guy over, it looks a little bit more realistic. So, I don't know if that was realistic, but uh, it's, it's better than in previous versions. Or if I drag the head and then... Beep! So basically at that moment I uh, uh, accidentally pulled out the USB cable from the microphone and that's why I will do a little voiceover at the moment uh, and redo the whole thing. So basically what I'm doing there is I'm dragging the uh, NPC and I think I was going to show you that uh, the anchor now works a lot better, I think. Uh, and now I'm spawning new NPCs for some reason. Already forgot what I why I did that. Oh yes, and when the uh, when the legs are no longer grounded, the hip anchor will be disabled, and you can uh, you can basically uh, flip them over very easily. So that's a little bit more realistic. So you can pull one leg, and uh, the NPC will fall over. And now what I'm going to do is. I'm going to spawn a NPC on these uh, on this wooden box. Yeah, so spawn an NPC on the box, and then I'm going to pull on the legs uh, to demonstrate that uh, the leg is no longer grounded, and then the NPC falls over, and this leads to a more realistic effect, basically. So at least I think that that's that is what I wanted to demonstrate in that situation. And now, what am I doing? <coughs> I'm explaining something. Oh yeah, I'm explaining that uh, the player rig now has a lot more friction on the ground. In previous versions there was a problem that there was very low friction on the ground and that was correlated to an issue with bad tracking. So you might have noticed is that, that uh, the tracking of the uh, character rig is a little bit off from the real world tracking. So there was always some delay also causing uh, causing motion sickness and all that. And that is now basically fixed and the player rig has more friction on the ground and that results into a uh, to more friction on the ground and that and now you move objects a little bit more consistent so it's not like you're pushing yourself back it's more that you're really moving objects in the game world because there's simply more friction on the ground and the player is uh, better grounded and uh, yeah that results into that punching is more realistic and uh, you have more influence on the uh, NPCs now. In previous versions, you would just push yourself back instead of uh, pushing the NPC, and now it goes the other way around. Yes, and now what am I doing? Oh yes, I think I'm going to... S no, uh, I'm killing the guy with the baseball bat. Yeah, and that looks also really good. Very cool. And now I'm going to delete all this with the uh, delete gun. And uh, now what I'm going to show you is that uh, I found out that you can actually fly in Project Third Eye. And uh, I'm going to demonstrate that by using uh, this wooden box and jump onto it. This is going to take a few times. And hep. Yeah, one more time. Let's go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crouch on the box and then I will uh, force grab the box. And if I stand up, I push the legs into the box, resulting into uh, uh, a force that will be applied on the uh, character rig. If I pull up the force grabbed object and uh, you can actually fly that way and surf on this uh, wooden box in this example. And uh, this works best if you have continuous turn enabled so that uh, yeah, you can continuously turn because I think this is not going to work on uh, with a snap turn. 
and uh, I think in this situation I said something like straight from the top of my dome I don't know what that was about yep um, yeah and I think that's it and I think in this situation I said uh, say tau and see you in the next development log and uh, yeah see you in the next development log of Project 3rd IVR.